Hi, this is Bob. It's a cold rainy day here in Michigan today. I'm down here in the basement and I'm working on uh, a piece of equipment. I just finished up on it here. Uh, it was a EEPROM programmer, a STAG PP28 EEPROM programmer. And uh, I looked at the circuit board. It did not work. I bought it uh, not working. It did not work and I looked at the circuit board and I saw, oh, it must be at least a hundred, maybe a hundred and fifty through plated holes on the circuit board. Well, what's a through plated hole, you might say? Well, they used to put jumper wires on circuit boards. You may see this circuit board here does not have jumper wires. And what they do is they put a through plated hole, the conductor goes through the hole, and then comes out the other side on the other side of the board and goes to another point. And by doing that, they eliminate jumper wires. And on some boards, they might have a lot of jumper wires. Now, as you can see, those through plated holes are hollow. When they make the circuit board, they put it in a plating bath, and that plating bath plates the inside of the holes so the conductor goes all the way through to the other side. Now, I'll turn this board over. Here, let me, uh, let me show you first how they go through. I'll take this uh, dental pick here and see, I'll just stick it right through. And then we can turn this board over. I want to turn it around too and show you the through plated holes where they come out. So the conductors go through to the other side and go to another point. And by doing that, like I say, they don't have to put jumper wires in. They can pass by an integrated circuit or something and go over to another point. And it makes the uh, construction so much easier. Now, uh, what do you do, though, uh, if these things are failing? And they do fail often. Through plated holes fail often. And this particular board here must have, uh, oh golly, 75 or more through plated holes just everywhere you look. Through plated holes, through plated holes. And if one of them fails, then this thing stops working and you can't use it. So what do I do? Well, they're quite easy to fix, really. Uh, the first thing you do is you want some very, very fine wire. And I've got some wire wrap wire here and I'm going to strip just a little bit of that wire wrap wire and I'm, that's what I'm doing right now and this is the wire wrap wire that I'm using here it's like a number 28 wire and as you can see it goes easily down into those holes now some folks take this wire and they put it on in the circuit board and they bend it over on the top and they bend it over on the bottom. That's called a Z wire. Those work fine. I have found on most of the circuit boards the Z wires are not necessary. That if you just get a wire to go through the hole then you've got a good connection because you've got the solder making connection on the top and the bottom. So what I do is I take a little tiny bit of solder and I fill the holes little tiny well it would work best if I turned the soldering iron on wouldn't it that'll take uh, about a minute to heat up I put a little tiny bit of solder down in the hole and it makes a little bead now that bead is important because you want that little bead that's humped up in the hole because you need to touch the edge of it with your soldering iron and that makes it the whole thing melt all the way through with that little bit of solder in there so then you can just stick the wire in there and it'll work just fine so uh, we're almost up to temperature here I had forgotten to turn the soldering iron on well that's not unusual you know one of my favorite sayings is if there's no mistakes being made then there's nothing being done because when you're doing things you make mistakes so we're going to put a little bit of solder on a couple of these holes just like that and you can see the little bead there and I'll do another one here right beside it just like that and you can see the little beads where I touch those and then I take this number 28 silver plated wire wrap wire I hope you can see this I heat that little bead and I stick the wire in like that and that's it 
done. I figure it takes me about uh, 10 to 15 seconds to do one of those. Then I just cut them off like that. And I'll do the other one here. I hope this video comes out okay. I got a, just a little cheap camera here. And I just stick it through like that. There we are. Now where is that wire? I don't even see it on the camera. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is, right there. <laughs> it's so small, you can't hardly see it in the camera. Okay, it just goes through, and I cut it, clip it off right there. I just got these clippers at, uh, at uh, Menards. They're, they're labeled Tool Shop, and they are the nicest little clippers for working on this stuff, and they were only a couple dollars. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys what plated through holes are and what is a good technique to repair them. Now you can see those are soldered on the top here. These two right here are soldered on there. And when I flip that over, here they are sticking out down here. There's the two right there. One right there and the other one beside it, right at the tip of my fingernail. And that is a good repair. And you can see here that they are soldered on the top and on the bottom. Now some of these may be underneath integrated circuits. Here's a couple here, underneath integrated circuit. Right there. There's an IC here, a big one, and these two are right here. Well when you stick those through from this side, you put your solder beads on there, and then you put your little wires down in there, they'll bump into the integrated circuit. That's fine because the integrated circuit's made of plastic and it's insulated. So that causes no problem at all. So you can do all these underneath an integrated circuit in the same manner. So that's it, guys. That's about, uh, I wanted to show about uh, through-plated holes. They were used a lot in the 80s, uh, the late 70s and the 80s, and even today in some cases on double-sided circuit boards. And they eliminate all the wire jumpers that used to be put on these circuit boards. So it makes it easier for assembly in the factory, cheaper for them all around. So that's it, 73s and good DX.